Hello, everyone. Today we are going to uh, have a look at a case study on generalized Markov models of healthcare systems. So this is the outline of today's lecture. Uh, first, we're going to discuss the problem, how to model the patient flows in the healthcare system. Two key questions we are going to answer. The first one is length of stay. How much time on average the patient spends in the clinic before getting discharged? Okay, the second question is occupancy distribution. What about the fraction of the time those patients spend in various units? Now let's have a look at uh, uh, this practical problem of Nittany Heart Center has two main parts. One is the outpatient clinic, and the, the second part is the inpatient unit. So in the outpatient clinic, doctors see the patient. In the inpatient facility, the doctors treat patients who need various surgical procedures. So there are six units in the inpatient facility. The first one is ER, the emergency room, where patients were brought in after suffering a heart attack, okay? So POW is a pre-op, pre-operation ward, where patients are prepared for surgery. SU is a surgical unit, basically the operating rooms where the actual surgery take place. And a POU is the post-operative unit, where the patients stay immediately after the surgery until they stabilize. So ICU is the intensive care unit where the patients stay as long as they need continuous attention or real-time monitoring. So ECU is extended care unit. So after the ICU, then the patient is moved to ECU where the patients stay until they can be discharged, okay? So two categories of patients come to the inpatient facility. The first category is scheduled patients. That means they schedule their surgical appointment ahead of time. And then they don't have to come to ER and they come to the pre-operation -op, pre ward. So they arrive at POW. And the second category is emergency patients. The emergency patients, they arrive at ER and then spend some time in the ER, is then transferred to either pre-operation ward, the ICU, or the extended uh, care units. So a patient come to the POW, that is pre-operation ward, is transferred to the surgical unit after the pre-op or preparation is complete. After the surgery is done, the patient is moved to the POU, post-operative unit. In rare cases, the patient may have to be rushed back to the surgical unit from the POU, but most often the patient is moved to the ICU after he or she stabilizes. Similarly, the patient can stay in the ICU for a random amount of time and then move back to surgical unit or extensive care unit, extended care unit. From the extended care units, a patient is discharged after the doctor deem it appropriate, okay? So this is how the patient is transferred among those units. But the main difference is the scheduled patient, they arrive at POW because they schedule their appointment ahead of, ahead of time. But an emergency patient, they arrive at an ER. So our research objective is to study the movement of patients among these six units of the facility and the amount of time the patient spent in various units of the inpatient facility during one visit. One visit means between admission and the discharge. Okay, so we are going to de develop a semi-Markov model uh, 
of the patient uh, uh, transitions among different units. So XET, E stands for the emergency patients. So XET is the state of uh, emergency patient at time T. So it is the state space, the state can be in one ER, two pre-operation ward, three surgical unit, four post-operative unit, and five intensive care unit, six extended care unit, and seven discharged. Okay, we have seven state. So the emer an emergency patient can take this one of the seven state and at a particular time T. And at time zero, the patient just come in and then the state will be one because the emergency patient arrive at ER first. So our data suggests suggest the embedded transition probability matrix. So this is a transition probability matrix. So the patient come to ER and stay in ER for a mean surgeon time. That means he will be there for a random amount of time in hours. Here in average is 4.5 hours here. And then he has a transition probability 32% go to pre-op, okay, what? And then 38% directly go to ICU and the 5% go to the extended care unit. And uh, there are some ER patients, they are not, uh, they don't have emergent, emergency conditions. So some of them, about 25%, they were triaged and uh, directly discharged, discharged. Okay, so this is emergency patient arrive at ER. Then once getting to POW, you see here ER, this is state one, right? State one can uh, go to uh, stay in a particular time, then jump to either POW2, 32 or 38 ICU, 5, 5% 5, 5 ECU, and then 25% get discharged. And let's have a look at uh, the second state, POW, 100%, it will be moved to the surgical unit. So from two to three is 100%. And the same for our other unit. You see in the surgical unit, you have 100% go to the post-operative. But after the post-operative unit, you have 94% go to ICU, but you still got a very small percentage, 6% rushed back to the surgical unit. You need to redo some of the surgery. In the ICU, and then 98% go to ECU, and you have 2% rush back to the surgical unit. And then once you are in the, uh, the patient is in the ECU, the 12% go to ICU and 88% that got discharged. And uh, if the patient is, in, uh, is discharged, then he will stay in the discharged state. So this is one. So this is semi-Markov because the time to stay in a particular state may not necessarily to be exponential. So that's why we use the uh, a semi Markov modeling. So, in semi Markov modeling, we need to know this uh, mean surgeon time and also the probably jump metrics from one unit to all other unit. Now, the second group of patients, category of patients, is the scheduled patient. So, let's use S to denote the state of a scheduled patient at time t. So, when the scheduled patient comes at time zero, it actually arrive at pre-operative POW, the second state, so POW. POW is the pre-operative uh, ward, and then get prepared and then move to the surgical unit. This is 100% for the scheduled patient. And then 100% go to post-operative. And then there's a probability to reach back and go to ICU. From ICU, 98% go to ECU and 2% rush back to the surgical unit. In the extended care unit, the 91% discharge and then stay in discharge and 9% go back to the ICU. And same here, we got a mean surgeon time in hours. How, uh, how long uh, or in av on average, that's the time that the patient stay in each unit. So for example, 2.4 hours in pre 
operative ward and get prepared and then move to the surgical unit. Then stay there for an average of an average 5.3 hours. Okay, so the data suggests the invalid transition matrix is as follows. So now we, uh, so far we talked about the problem and we also uh, extract the transition probability matrix, mean surgeon time from the data. We define the state of emergency patient and uh, schedule the patient at a, a particular time T and also we define the state space. Now we, we are ready to study the first, uh, uh, to answer the first research question, the length of stay. How much time on average the patient sp spends in the clinic before getting discharged? So let's use MIJ to, to denote the mean first passage time from state I to state J. So J doesn't equal to I. So for example, if we have M17 for emergency patients, this means one is the ER, seven is the discharge. We can move back, you see discharge from ER to discharge. How long does it take? Okay, so the, the mean first passage time. And for scheduled patient is from POW, the second POW to seven to discharge. So for emergency patient, based on the, uh, this is the emergency patient, the, uh, the embedded probability transition matrix, and then the mean surgeon time. So M17 is actually equals to four, because stay in the state one for 4.5 hours and then make a transition 32% to state two. And from state two, you have mean passage time to seven. And then 38% to state five, then M57. This is called one step transition. So from state one, you make one step transition, okay? And then from the destination, you, you go all the way to, to seven. There are all different kinds of way you can have first passage time from two to seven, first passage time from five to seven, first passage time from six to seven. And the same from state two, and you can make, uh, uh, because we're gonna st uh, stay there for an average of uh, 2.4 hours. And then we make one step transition but the one step transition only have one, right? Three, and then we just add uh, three, seven. And because this is one, this is actually one times M three, seven. And similarly for all other state, we make one step transition first and then we go all the way to seven. So this, this equation, uh, this set of equation will help us to solve for M one, seven. And uh, after calculation, we got M one, seven equals to 139.8883 hours. This is approximately 5.8287 days. So that means the emergency patient, okay, on average will spend 5.8287 days in the clinic before getting discharged. Now we're gonna repeat this for this matrix. This is the uh, scheduled patient transition matrix. So how much time on average is a patient, the scheduled patient spends in the clinic? So this, we are gonna compute M27. So from, from two, we make one step transition to three, and then we continue to do this. Uh, so the first, this, this column is actually the average uh, mean surgeon time in each state. Then you make one step transition. Then you go from, for example, four to three. That is four, two, three, four. Four to three is 2%. Four to uh, two, three, four, five. Four to five is 98%. So that's 0 0.98, I'm um, 57. Now we solve this uh, set of equation, we got M27. That's 156.7177 hours. So this is approximately 6.5299 days. 
So how come emergency patient is like 5.83 days approximately? And uh, the scheduled patient is about 6.53 6 days. So why the scheduled patient spend longer time than the emergency patient? This is a little bit of counterintuitive. But however, if you go back, you will notice that not all emergency patients undergo surgery. About 25%, that's a quarter of them, discharge right away after their visits to ER because they, the doctor deemed that it is not necessary for them to go for the surgery, okay? Now, we answered the first research question, the length of stay. Now let's have a look at the occupancy distribution for emergency patients. So occupancy distribution is in the long run, what is a fraction of the time this patient stay, uh, spend uh, in various units. Assume there is a circulating. Now, because previously, if we have a patient, it will get discharged, right? Now let's assume there is a circulating emergency patient in the system. That means we, continues to, we continue to have a patient to circling around, then make different kind of jumps. Then on, in the long run, we will be able to calculate how, uh, what's a fraction of time to spend in each unit. So this, we just get rid of the discharge state. Uh, we move the ECU, like discharge 80, 80%, but we assume there will be a new patient generated immediately. Or ER, they are 25% got discharged and we assume there is a new patient that got generated so that, so that we can have a circulating emergency patient in the system. Because we made this uh, variation, then we get rid of discharge and then from ECU, like uh, ECU is state six, we are going to uh, come back to, to state one ER. Okay, and we add a 0.25 in the first state as well, because even if the patient get discharged from ER, we assume we regenerate a new patient, a circulating patient, so that we can calculate the long run fraction of the time this patient spend in various units. We just assume we have a circulating system. Now, because we change the state, now we use a new notation called Y, E, T, and uh, this is the emergency uh, patient and the state of the emergency patient at time T. And the state space is uh, ER, POW, surgical unit, post-operative unit, ICU, ECU. We don't have discharge anymore because upon discharge, we replace the emergency patient by a new one in state one so that we can have a circulating emergency patient in the system. And, and we have the same mean surgeon time and uh, a little bit of variation to the transition matrix. And uh, we add a C here because we denote emergency patient circulating emergency patient. And based on this transition probability matrix, we got this pi limiting distribution for the embedded DTMC. And then based on the Selmy Markov model, the limiting distribution or occupancy distribution, we will be able to get a PEC. Okay. That means uh, in the long run, like for example, 1.74% uh, of the time of the emergency patient, they are going to spend in the surgical unit. But 71.89%, they are going to stay, uh, the, the, the time is going to be spent in the extended, extended care unit. Okay. Uh, so how to go from limiting distribution and the mean surgeon time to calculate the occupancy distribution? This we have uh, discussed actually in the semi-Markov uh, uh, process, the, the lecture, the lecture, the previous lecture. So I, I copied that slide over here so that uh, so this is a theorem, okay? And uh, this is uh, MJT to denote the total amount of time and spending state J. So PJ denotes the long run fraction of the time, the SMP, semi-Markov process spending state J. So if we net T goes to infinity, we will be able to get the long run fraction of time uh, spent in a particular state. 
This is also called uh, occupancy distribution because you stay in state one, state two, state n. The theorem is suppose xt is a semi Markov process with an irre irreducible embedded DTMC, okay, xn. And uh, the occupancy distribution of the, uh, of the semi Markov process exists, is independent of the initial state of the uh, semi Markov process. That is pj equals to pi j, the mean surge in time wj, divided by the summation from state one to n pi i and wi. And this pi is a solution to the balance equation of the embedded uh, DTMC, and w is the uh, uh, is a mean surge in time. So here we have the pi. This is a, a limiting distribution of the embedded DTMC. And then we also have mean surge in time. Then we can uh, solve for occupancy distribution at uh, each state or each unit. Okay, that is the pi. Uh, and the pi j wj divided by summation pi i wi m from uh, uh, i from one to n, yeah. Similarly, we can do uh, the calculation of occupancy distribution for the scheduled patients. So now we net use the notation ys, this s denotes scheduled patient and the state uh, for the circulating uh, scheduled patient and the state space. You see the state space here, we have two POW, we don't have ER anymore because scheduled patient directly arrive at pre-operative ward. And then, then we have, uh, we have got a read of same, uh, same as the previous uh, uh, emergency patient, we get rid of the discharge state. And then if a patient get discharged, we immediately replace with a new one. So this is 91%. Okay, we just move this and we get rid of the state seven and then we move 0.91 over here. Uh, the mean surgeon time is, uh, uh, is the same as before. Now, uh, limiting distribution of the DTMC. Okay, and this is the DTM, embedded DTMC. So S means scheduled patient and C means circulating. So we have limiting distribution pi, and we also have mean surgeon time. Then we can calculate the occupancy distribution. You, you, you may notice that uh, the scheduled patient spent 3.53% of the time in the surgical unit and 69.21% in the extended care units. So this is, uh, this is the end of the case study on uh, healthcare systems. And this, this lecture actually demonstrates how to develop or, or define the generalized Markov models uh, of the patient flow in uh, inpatient clinic uh, facility. And through the Markov model, we can calculate uh, the uh, occupancy distribution and also uh, length of state. So time and, and for a patient. So this is uh, two question we answered. How much time on average is a patient spends in the clinic before getting discharged? So schedule the patient or emergency patient. And also what are the fraction of, long run fraction of time this patient or scheduled patient or emergency patient spending in various units. So those information actually help us uh, understand uh, the patient uh, flows among different units. But uh, on the other hand, we want to uh, design the, the healthcare system and especially the capacity uh, of each, each unit so that we can uh, minimize the uh, length of stay. So that's, that's a design question we are going to uh, discuss more in the queuing theory and also use how to use queuing theory to do the capacity planning uh, for the healthcare system. We will have a new case study uh, on that. So just watch for the next lecture.